Hello again. My last video in this course will be on sustainability. I will sum up different aspects of sustainability and I will illustrate a few complications. Of course, we require our new bio-based world to be sustainable. But what is sustainable? We think of people, planet and profit. Profit has been treated in the previous video and the guest lecture. If we think of people, for instance, we want to shut out bad labour conditions, land grab and hunger. This applies particularly to governance in production regions. With planet, we may refer to the maintenance of soil fertility, water availability and quality and natural habitats. Soil fertility has been the subject of theme 5, nutrients. Water is not a special topic in this course and I will come back to land use change. The main argument for pursuing bio-based energy or materials is that it is instrumental in greenhouse gas emission savings. It is important that you realize a few things. First, CO2 may be the greenhouse gas with the highest atmospheric volume, but it's not the only one. Methane, CH4 and laughing gas, N2O, which are produced during crop cultivation, are significantly stronger greenhouse gases than CO2. Second, the emission should be summed up over the entire supply chain or life cycle from acre to waste. Whereas the carbon content of the feedstock may be grabbed from the air during crop raising, both fertilizer use, transport and processing will require the use of fossil energy. In summation, we may hope that the emission effect is positive. In the forum discussion of this week's theme, you will see that there are clever and foolish solutions for the same product, based on an old but landmark report, the Gallagher Review. Third, the emission savings are always measured against the fossil reference. When we realize a new bio-based supply chain, we do not only replace the fossil emissions, but we also replace the former use of the same biomass or of the production land. This brings us to land use change, one of the hottest debates at the time. Some years ago there was a publication by Searchinger claiming that for every acre of land used for non-food applications, one acre of tropical forest would be destroyed. If true, this would have a devastating effect both on greenhouse gas savings and natural habitats. Luckily enough, these fears have been downplayed and discerned by succeeding studies, as are the fears for food price rises due to feedstock claims from new bio-based markets. Until now, these effects were not measurable and in the future, they will be modest at most. Macroeconomists take account of investments in soil productivity and in better crops when feedstock prices rise. Furthermore, to feed an increasing world population, we need investments in farming productivity. Realize that until 2008, for decades, the world has seen agricultural overproduction with the European Union and US dumping subsidized surpluses on African and Latin American markets. Since 2008, feedstock prices have risen to more reasonable levels, with a few highs due to increased food consumption and temporary stockouts. As a result, Mexicans have returned to producing their own tortillas, Egypt is exporting sugar again, and farmers are again making a living. Without having to cut down rainforests, there is still plenty of room to increase production both for food and bio-based markets. With this optimistic message, I would like to conclude my last video. There is no assignment for this week, lucky you. If you are interested, you may read the references given to you or feedback your questions to us.